Mrs. Turner, called Mrs. T, cooks and digs for victory. She grows herbs in her window box, cress on a plate, her allotment she keeps in an excellent state, with potatoes and carrots and onions in rows, while each cabbage and cauliflower lavishly grows. So the Turners eat well, and the food they don't need, the community kitchen can use up with speed. The U-boats and Dorniers will soon meet their match when each one of us feeds off our own cabbage patch. Mary, what are you doing with that cabbage? Shredding some for sandwiches. Come and finish your breakfast first. Porridge isn't enough. Margarine? Thanks. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Me, Mum, Dad. Have some watercress again, dear. Making your skin so nice and clear. Might be, if you could see it. But now lipsticks are getting as rare as bananas. Have some more porridge, Dad. No, thanks. I think I'll try some watercress. Hoping to get a nice, clear skin? Well, my complexion's always been my chief claim to beauty. Mary, do you want the mustard and cress for your sandwiches? No, thanks, Mum. You have it for the kids' dinners. Helping at the centre again today? Yes. How this stuff grows. You know, I'm certain it's taller than when I last looked at it. Well, cheerio, dear. Goodbye. Mary. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Mum. I've got a carrot to chew as I go. Carrots and caramels both begin with C, but caramels were much nicer. Yes, but carrots are much better for you. The Turner family are now living in a flat, but as you'd expect those of you who've met them before, they're pretty busy digging for victory. They have herbs in the window box. There are relays of mustard and cress growing in saucers. And the Turner's allotment, which Mrs. T calls her cabbage patch, really is a model of what an allotment ought to be. Don't forget, vegetables are alive and full of vitality. Your eyes aren't trained to see beans climb or radishes swell. While young beans grow up, cabbages sprout, cauliflowers get larger, and the cells inside potatoes store up starch. But actually they're busy doing all these things. If you cook and eat vegetables wisely, you'll get the stores of foodstuffs and energy they've laid up for themselves. Obviously, the fresher they are, the better. The Turner's allotment produces enough stuff for the family and for Mrs. T to take some to the local community restaurant, which in wartime plays an important part in the lives of residents and evacuees. Here in the kitchen under the eye of the head cook, 300 meals are prepared every day for adults, school children, toddlers and babies. Mrs. T goes in to report to the trained supervisor who is in charge. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Turner. Have you brought anything for us today from your allotment? Yes, a whole basket full in the kitchen. What's the menu? Wartime steaks. As you know, the ration won't run to joints every day. And then there's rice and fruit pudding. And vegetables and gravy for the under fives, I suppose. Yes. Why not try making them some tiny little steaks? Oh, they'd love that. And Betty has made some custard with a special allowance of milk we have for them. So that will certainly brighten their pudding up a bit. Oh, brighten it up. That's the problem these days. That and the flavouring. I brought along these herbs. They'll help to brighten up the steaks. It is a job getting grown-ups to take to war diet. They miss the flavours they've enjoyed all their lives. But the children seem happy enough, and most of the people are wonderfully well. Look, Mrs. Turner, I amused myself with this last evening. Today's menu and a pre-war Sunday dinner. And look at this chart. We need something from each of these groups every day. Before the war, we had more meat than we really needed. But now we are using more potatoes, oatmeal and vegetables. You see, with the extra vegetables, today's dinner is really nourishing. Yes, and if you're hungry enough, it makes your mouth water. But I do wish people would cook their vegetables properly. Oh, I love the smell of cabbage. <laughs> well, you don't get that here. Some of the kitchen workers have whole-time paid jobs. 
Others are regular volunteer helpers like Mrs. T. These are the materials for wartime steaks. In this kitchen, they are lucky enough to be well equipped, and the mixing is done in a mechanical mixer. The wheatmeal bread is already put in, and is followed by equal parts of minced shin of beef and of carrot. They add Mrs. T's herbs for flavouring, together with some onions which have been minced up, tops as well. When it's well mixed, Cook takes small pieces of the mixture and shapes them with floured hands. Who'll eat this wartime steak? Who'll eat this wartime steak? Who'll eat this wartime steak? Carrots. No time is wasted in scraping vegetables. A mechanical vegetable scraper does the job in no time. The kitchen workers clear up as they go, and the job of providing food for hundreds is tackled in a gay but orderly manner. Potatoes go into the steaming oven on big trays. They've been scrubbed, but not peeled, for peeling wastes much of their nutritive value. Cabbage. You remember Mrs. T said cabbage never smelt in this kitchen. Well, this is how Cook tackles the job. She shreds the cabbage, and notice how she tidies up her table. It isn't difficult to keep this kitchen clean and tidy, as almost everything in it is done by electricity. The water, very little of it, is boiling. Salt and a little fat are added. And then the cabbage follows. The lid is put on. Remember that. Rice pudding is made with half water. In go the rice, some sugar, and then the milk. Custard in the same way is made with water and milk. Tidying as they go is a habit here, and washing up is done by a washing up machine. The plates and saucers from the staff elevenses are pushed in on a rack, jets of boiling water clean them, and they're so hot they dry by themselves. This final polish isn't necessary, but they're rather particular in this kitchen. Now for the first meal. It's in the day nursery and it's pretty simple. Just milk. This baby's mother is making munitions. And Janet's mother is a wartime worker too, and leaves her in the nursery all day. After meals, the babies sleep. Sound. We're lucky to see this room when it's so peaceful. Now for the toddler's dinners. The second meal served in this community restaurant. They are taught to wash their hands before meals, and every child has its own hook to hang its towel on. Each table has servers who fetch the food and take it back to the others who are waiting more or less patiently. What's for dinner today? The tiny steaks will be popular. Little children are accustomed to a well-balanced war diet. They thrive on it and go to fetch more vegetables and steaks. Children need more milk than adults and get it in drinks and with their stewed fruit in the form of custard. If they take their meal in some sort of educational centre, school or British restaurant, they get good supplies. Leave nothing on the spoon. But another problem is, when there's so much on the spoon, how does it go in? That's done it. The menu for the school children includes watercress and parsley. These provide the vitamins that used to be supplied by raw fruit. And this is grated carrot. The children file up to fetch their plates. Some of them are residents in the neighborhood, some are evacuees from bombed areas. By having food in the community restaurant, they make certain of one good balanced meal a day. 
Notice how they help themselves from the bowl of grated carrot on the table. Believe it or not, it contains the same vitamins as butter and helps to satisfy the children's natural longing for sweets. This girl tries raw parsley and isn't too sure of it. But all's food that comes to his mouth. And it isn't only the young who are catered for. The menu suits grown-ups and old people too. Evacuees, busy residents, tradesmen and travellers who find themselves near the community restaurant midday, they all come in for a nourishing meal. This is a good habit that will last into peacetime. It suits women and men, old and young. And the basis of the meal is always fresh, homegrown vegetables. The life and vitality of the vegetables build up the children. Vegetables strengthen the old people. Vegetables grown and prepared by ordinary women like Mrs. T build up the British people. Vegetable juices lay good foundations for the youngest Britons of all. Thank you and your cabbage patch, Mrs. T.